good vibes, good vibes, always good and positive vibes here at the Political Puff Podcast. Brother Push. Yes, sir, Brother Fitz. How you doing, bro? I'm doing wonderful, man. Always yeah. a pleasure to be in the same oh, building yeah. with you. Also, my brother, Brother True. Brother True. How you doing, brothers? Over there smiling behind that beard right now. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be a good one, man. This is uh, this is a, a one we we really discussed and we talked and we went kind of back and forth on this one right here. But we gonna we gonna trust him the knowledge that we know. Yeah. This is another good subject again, um, brother brother True. How you feeling over there today? I'm feeling pretty good, brother. Yes, sir. I'm doing wonderful, brother Push. You know, you know this lesson is something else. I know right it here. is, man. Because oh man, this is about to be a good one right here, man. Put your seat belts on. I hope you got some popcorn for this one, man. This is gonna be good. This one is what is the meaning of church? Of church. Real simple, right? What's the meaning of church? We're just gonna just take the word church, you know, or you're gonna break it down. Now you know whenever you're dealing with brother push, it's never gonna be as simple as it sounds. Just a word take it like it, it's never as simple as it sounds you know he gonna dive so deep into it <laughs> you know man Basically so pick it apart <laughs> right right so uh before i have uh brother fitz read this piece i want to say this right here um we are doing a lesson on what does church mean i know a lot of us has looked that word up and uh we see it as a uh, church means assembly but like I tell a lot of people, when we're looking at where the origins of words come from, you have to go into the etymology of words. And uh, you have to go to the 1200s. You have to go below the 1200s to the 11s to the 1000s. You have to go that far if you're looking for the original word or what the original meaning of a word is. So... What we're going to show in this lesson is is that church has two meanings. I know there's a meaning that we normally see that says assembly, but I also want to show you the original meaning before it was changed to assembly. So we'll get all into that right there, but we're going to have uh, Brother Fitz read this first piece right here. And... Um, this is something that you generally see if you type in church, and this is at uh, the online uh, etymology dictionary. So you can research this right here that we're looking at. So, Brother Fitz. So here we go. We're going to get uh, right into it. The word church, which is a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Uh, Old English, churche, or churche, place of assemblage set aside for Christian worship. The body of Christian believers, Christians collectively, ecclesiastical authority or power from Proto-Germanic, churchka, source also of Old Saxon, churchka, Old Norse, kerja, Old Frisian, zercha, Middle Dutch, churche, Dutch, church, Old High, German, churcha. German church. This is probably uh, borrowed via an unrecorded Gothic word from Greek churchka or churcha. Church, uh, churchion, doma, the Lord's house. So I know that was a hot mess right there, y'all. <laughs> As trying to speak outside of the English language. Mm -hmm. So. You got to give Brother Fitz credit for this right here because we have been trying to work on our words right here. But yes. I know you look at this first word and it looks like it says Krika or it might say Cerise. Or Actu Circa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, the word is actually Churche. It's like the beginnings before it says church. Um, the C. Before it was a C, it was a K. And that K-I-R is considered to be like Chur. And that C-E is considered to be like Che. So even if you look to the uh, bottom right on our page, you'll see right here it says German Churche. So we want to get everybody to understand that that's not uh, Krika or Cerise. 
that's actually church -a, even though the spelling looks you know way different than how it's said but we wanted you to see something right here the word church or church -a. it says it's a place of assembly so we're all taught that the word church means assembly right but if you look at the second line it says this it says this is probably borrowed via an unrecorded gothic word what that's saying right there is the meaning assembly was not the original word it was actually a word borrowed from another greek word right you see what i'm saying so we want everybody to understand that this word church now has two meanings because mm -hmm. if it's saying this is probably borrowed via unrecorded gothic words from greek if it's borrowed then that's saying that is not the original word so what we want to do is see what word was there before it became assembly mm -hmm. you know so we're going to take a look at this next page to see what word was there before it became assembly so we'll take a look at this next right. one right here so the word <clears throat> Churche, also a noun, means beautiful enchantress of the Isle of Aea, who transformed into swine those who drank from her cup. The Odyssey, late 14th century, from Latin, Churche, from Greek, Churche, or Churche, related, Churchin, yes. or, was that what I, was yeah, that? Churchin, yeah. okay, fascinating but depraving. Fascinating but depraving. Okay. So if you look at this right here, on the previous page it said church, churche, now. And then we show you that same churche. I know it looks like it says cerise or even however it may look to you, but that's actually churche. But it's saying that this is a beautiful enchantress of the Isles of Aia, someone who transformed people into animals so this church a that they're talking about obviously is a witch if we look below it says from latin church a from greek church a also k-i-r-k-e the same spelling it's in the definition for a church which came out to be assembly you see what i'm right. saying right there okay they, they came it came out to be assembly but the truth of the matter is assembly is after the fact right the real meaning for church or it's, church a it's is a beautiful enchantress you know, of the isle of a we'll look at this other piece right here brother true he can bring us in on this right here church a church a was the goddess of sorcery pharmacia who was skilled in the magic of transmutation, illusion, and no necromancy. She lived on the mythical island of Aia, or Aia, with her nymph companions. When Odysseus came to her island, she transformed his men into beasts, but with the help of the god Hermes, he overcame her and forced her to end the spell. So, if you look here at the top, K-I-R-K-E, mm -hmm. That's saying churche. Churche. If you look below, it's saying K R R K K I R K E churche, and then it's spelled C I R C I R C E. That's still churche, and it's saying that it's a goddess, a sorceress, whose name is also pharmakia. The word pharmacy comes from this name pharmakia, mm -hmm. so we're going to be looking at this name pharmakia a little more, but we want everybody to understand that the original name for a church was not assembly the original name for a church was the name of a deity that's the original name before it got a new definition that's why i showed in the beginning that it said it was probably borrowed from a greek word so if it was borrowed from a greek word then that means the meaning of assembly isn't the original so then we look at these Kirkes, these churches, they're all the same writing. 
just now it's talking about a deity, not people assembling. You see what I'm saying? Right. right. Yeah. Right there. So we're going to look at this next piece right here to uh, see pharmakia, to understand that this mistress, who this mistress is, pharmakia right here. You know, so we're going to jump here. If you can look, I'm going to read right here. It says, the use of medicines, drugs, or spells, magic, sorcery, or enchantment. Is that it, from the Strong's Concordance, Brother True? I mean, Brother Push? Yes. I just I wanted to make so. sure that people knew yes, that. That is Strong's. That is from the Strong's. Englishman's Concordance. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you, it says right there. Um, pharmakia. It says, properly related sorcery like the practice of magical arts. Pharmacy. What do they sell? They sell what? Drugs. Medicine, drugs. They sell what? Medicine. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, when those medicines, you take them, they make you droggy. That's possibly they put you under a spell. Right. The but word they, pharmacy. They, they alter your body or they alter your mind in some, some way. Some way. So the word pharmacy or the word pharmakia. The word pharmacy comes from this goddess whose name is Churche, <laughs> the, the, who turned men into swine. The word pharmacy is also her name. So she put spells on people. She turned those guys into swine by giving them drugs, by giving them a potion and getting them to drink this. And then supposedly men turned into animals. So this same thought right here of, this goddess right here, right. someone named the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. after this deity. Because pharmacy comes from the word pharmakia. Yeah. Hmm. So not only is church the name of a deity, but church is also the name of pharmakia. Pharmakia in church is the exact same word because Absolutely. they're the names of a deity. Even down... Talk about where at the bottom right yeah. there says word studies. Yeah. Uh, pharmakia or pharmakuo administer drugs. Yeah. Properly related sorcery like the practice of magical arts. So there's a correlation of, 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 of uh, some supernatural yeah. and some mad or, you know, that type of belief yeah. going into that. That's definitely heavy influence in that for sure. And see, reason why they call it pharmacy. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't know if they're putting spells on the magic or on the on the medicine or anything mm -hmm. like that, but the whole thought of making something that turns someone into something else, you know, that's what medicine does. You know, uh, you take certain medicines, um, the wrong ones, your kids come out ADHD. This is yes. what pharmacia does. Pharmacia destroys and turns you into something other than you know so it's got its some i guess the symbolism inside of it you know you oh you getting deep on the road right now brother yeah Chris. you getting deep yeah you know so they're all tied into it you know they just right. they didn't pick the word pharmacy just out of nowhere right. you know they knew that they were taking the name of a deity who was one who turned men using potions supposedly into animals now okay i know this is all fairy tale Greek talk, but nevertheless, um, that is the meaning of church. Church is the name of a deity, deity, of a female deity. And pharmakia is also the name of the same female deity named church or churche, okay. depending on what tongue you want to speak, you okay. know. Okay. <laughs> but we'll go to this other piece right here, because I want to hit it again to show you that everybody is taught that this word right here, church, means assembly. So, Brother True, if we could just read this small piece up to Lord's Worship. The etymological sense of, the, of this English name, church, from the Greek, which church, church, is the Lord's house or house set apart for the Lord's worship. So, I show this part right here as in to show you that we're taught that the word church means assembly but I just showed you the same word the same word with the same word breakdown K-I-R-K 
That's Cherche, K-E-R-K-E. -E. That is the exact same word as the deity. That's the exact same word as the deity, Cherche. Cherche. So it goes back to the beginning. This word assembly was a borrowed word from another Greek word. Truthfully, what's going on is some basically in the 1200s, um, you have a point where everybody's starting to reject the gods. So what they did was, as they start to create the printing press, they took all the words that were considered bad, or the words or the names that people rejected, and basically gave them new meanings and wrote it in a book. Then you go to their schools and to their institutions, and then all of a sudden now you're learning the word church under its new meaning, assembly. Well, before it was written in a book, it was the name of, of a deity. Of a deity, absolutely. You know, so the word church does have two meanings. Just so everybody you know, um, mm -hmm. this book right here is the Church of God or Essays on Various Names. So I want everybody to know that we do try to show where we're grabbing our literature from, even as we're going through this right here. But I'm going to have you go to the next page here. We're going to go to the next one because this brings everything together. So we'll start at the top real quick, and then we'll break our way to the bottom. Okay, so church, a noun, Old English, churiche or churche. 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 Church, church, public place of worship. Christians collectively from Proto-Germanic churchka. Cognates, Old Saxon, Churchka, Old Norse, Churchja, Old Frisian, Zercha, Middle Dutch, Churcha. Okay, so I wanted y'all to see that word, Churche. So that's the word church, it says noun, then it says Old English, and then that word right there is Churche. It says a C, but if you roll over a little bit, it starts changing into a K because its original sound was a K. That's before it was a C, it was a K. And that's church, like church cha. Church, church, church cha. Church cha. You see what I'm saying? But it's the same word right there. And then if you get below where it says goddess, church A. Not with, you know, that's not cerise, that's right. church A. The same word used for church up above, where it says noun. Those are the same two words. And then if you read right here, Brother Fitz, where it says goddess. So goddess, churche, sometimes pronounced churche, properly pronounced in traditional ancient Greek as circe. Yes. Her origins and myths are plenty in Greek mythology. In one, she is said to be the daughter of the sea nymph Perseus and the sun god Helios. So, think of Christos Helios. Christos Helios. Yes. So, again, you see the word that goddess Churche, sometimes pronounced K-I-R-K-E. Well, if you go up above with the, the new version of church, which means assembly, it has the exact same word. It is the exact same word. It's just the factor that it has two meanings. It originally did not mean assembly. It meant the name of this goddess right here. And then as people start to reject this goddess, when they started printing their books for the Renaissance, because you're in the medieval, medieval times and in the Dark Ages, when they start printing their books for the Renaissance, they took the mistress name church, church A. Right and gave it a meaning called assembly. Right. So now when you open up every book starting from the 1400s, it's always going to say assembly. assembly. All the time. But if you go into the 1200s, it's going to say some deity name. So, you know, this is the thing what we talk about, about, you know, where does things come from? We're calling on this church, not realizing that it's the name of the mother harlot. Just like in the last lesson, in the previous video, Bible, that was the name of the mother harlot. Right. You know, it's right. constantly these elite people has tricked the whole world yes. into calling on the mother harlot. Right. <laughs> no matter what. They're like, we're going to give her a new meaning, but you're still going to call her name, you know. <laughs> so that, that is, that's wild right there. 
you know, but um, on this next piece, you know, we have a couple of interesting pictures right here of how they depicted this mother goddess or this goddess, because all the goddesses are the same, though they have this, this name, you know, they have many names. Right. <laughs> Uh, there's a, a few different ones that you, you'll see right now. and uh, One of the first ones is uh, Deanna or Artemis, which was the original Nazi. Uh, or Deanna was also called uh, Isis or in, Isis, Isis. In, in, Isis in, in Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, you can see those Nazi symbols on there. Now, I'm not saying they were Nazis. Right. But well, there's swastikas. See, there's, there's swastikas. There's definitely swastikas. You know, right? and right? they got... Definitely see some uh, relevancy inside of history, you know, and this is going pretty, at least to the 1200s, 1100s, way before uh, Hitler came about, you know. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, you can see all these other pieces right here, you know. Um, it got this thing about this bell shape uh, with her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Artemis as a bell-shaped goddess with a double swastika flanked by long-necked birds. Yeah. This is, this is the mother goddess that they keep pushing at us. And, you know, they, they got many different ways of looking at her. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the, uh, the bottom left right here, you see that it says Cherche, C-I-R-C-E, that's church. church. And that is the same word as church. And church and churche is the name of a deity. That's why you see that woman there. It's the name of a deity first before it became assembly. That's what's important right there. But we want to get on to this next page right here because this is a good piece of meat. This is, this is some heavy meat right here on this page right here. This book. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, this book right here. Right. This book right here. Uh, Brother True, you want to give us the title of this book and that little line read? Myths of Greece and Rome, narrated with special reference to Second line. Helena Adeline Gruber. Okay. We just gave her a shout out. So. <laughs> they had a second line right there in the moon. In the moon, myths, the most important personification is first Diana, the horn huntress. For to the ancients, the moon was Diana, Eel, and Churche. That's real right there. So I wanted y'all to see something right here. It says, in the moon myth, the most important personifications, it's first Diana, the horn huntress. I want to stop right there mm -hmm. and think about what is the horn huntress. The first thing I thought right. in my mind was Snow White. Because of the movie? <laughs> it was a woman with a big, with like two big black what? Horns. The big Maleficent. Yeah. Yes. She was actually the the villain in the, the Snow White movie, right? She yeah. had the big, long, Big, black long, horns. black horns coming yes. out of her head. And she was, she was evil, for sure. <laughs> so we know that she was definitely hunting something, or she was hunting, yeah. you know. But that's uh, the Huntress. I, 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 I like that, that connection that you make with the with the with, with that with well, push like you, you know, it's, you know? It's, it's I like I didn't even make it up. It says in the moon myth the most important personification is first Diana, the horned huntress. If she is the horned huntress, then that means that she is a evil sorceress witch. Yes. That's what yes. the horned huntress is. You mean to tell me that People in the 1200 praised a sorceress witch that turned people into animals or basically did something to their mind. That's Deanna. And if you look below, it says right here, it says, For the ancients, the moon was Deanna, Eo, and Churche, and not a lifeless ball of stone and clod. So Deanna, Eo, and Churche. What is that? Is they all the same Deity? I would have to say I feel like that they are all related, Brother Push. I feel like they are only because when we get to this part where it says Io and Churche already mentioned, comma, 
yeah. <laughs> are also personifications of the moon. And Io's wanderings represents its journeys across the sky. Yeah. So I would put Deanna, Io, and Churche all in the same. All in the same. They are all the same. They are all the same. You know, Deanna but, is church. Right? <laughs> we know that for sure. So yes. and then it, and then like I said, and then they and I think that purposely in that paragraph when the group in Io and Churche right there where yeah. it's already mentioned, just Giving you another affirmation that they are personifications yeah. of the moon. Of the moon. Simple as that. Simple as that. And this is what I'm talking about. So, in a sense, I wanted to say that the word church originally is the name of a deity. The deity Diana. I mean, there's many names. I mean, uh, this deity is also the name Bible. I mean, there's many names for this, this goddess, this mother harlot. That's the main point. There became a time, though, in the dark ages where people started to reject Deanna. Mm -hmm. So when they started basically having that printing press, they mm -hmm. went over there by the 14th century. This is why it's the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Renaissance, because they have redefined everything and wrote it in the book. They have redefined right. everything, you know. But now that we've looked at that church wasn't originally assembly that is the name of a deity right and then it became you know assembly we want to look and understand that like all things everything has a worldly standpoint that's always my favorite part of the lessons man <laughs> brother push i can't even lie to you brother true too the the the, the we talk about the worldly part because you know brother push you got the the you really hit him with the with the historical part of it the spiritual, you know, the spiritual part of yeah. it now we're gonna hit him with the with the, with the, with the worldly. The worldly. Because the who would have yeah. known that there is a church family? A real church family. A real church family. A real family. church family. Like not yeah. only do you got a deity named church, not only do you got the word church being defined as assembly, but now you got also a family called church. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. The name church is originally a family name. And that family's name, basically, in in their luministic rites, they exalt a name beyond uh, uh, a regular name calling. Like, you have the word king. Well, you can get exalted to a high level of spirituality to where all of a sudden you're God or all of a sudden, you know, you're the mother goddess. You know, so church, no matter if it jumped from German or whatever, has always been the name of a family. And you have the elite who basically thrust this family into some high spiritual position. And that spiritual position was the mother goddess or Deanna. You see? So ultimately, no matter what, they we're, we're praising a family. No matter what, you're praising a deity. And no matter what, we're tricked under a new definition, assembly. Like, it does not mean assembly. It is the name of a family. And then second, it became the name of a deity. And then thirdly, you know, so to read a little bit about the church family, you know, um, uh, Brother Fitz, we'll have you read that right there, just a little bit on this church family. Okay, so this is the church history family crest and coats of arms. You'll see a depiction of that right there. Yeah. And the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon name church comes from the family having resided near a church. <laughs> 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 The surname church is derived from the Old English word searche, I would say searche, which is itself derived from the late Greek word churchon, which means house of the Lord. Okay, we can stop right there. <laughs> okay, church comes from a family having resided near a, a church. church. Now, wait a minute, we just did the history <laughs> on church, and we know that it wasn't never a building it was nope. a, the name of a deity. The name of a deity, bro. <laughs> name of a deity. Oh, my goodness. That's what I'm yeah. talking about when I say re-education. The Renaissance, they re-educated us all yeah. and has put the word assembly. And, and like I said, there's no history. When you start reading at this family church, it's no history that it's a deity. There's no history. It's like, oh, no, this name because they were living next to a church. No. Right. That is the family name. That family right there became 
the deity, and then that family right here also opened up churches in their name. Yeah. Like Walmart, you know, it's the Waltons. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's the exact same thing. The church family opened up churches. You know, that's really what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this bottom piece right here, early origins of the church family. Uh, read this part to 1296. So the surname church was first found in principality or, or principally in Somerset, but also many countries of England. One of the first records of the name was Thomas at a church or at a church, who was listed in the subsidy rolls of Worcester in 1296. Look, the 1296. This is dark ages. This is a family name. This is at the same time that Deanna is being praised as a deity. Also, there's no building. There's her being praised at a temple, and the temple wasn't called church yet. There's Deanna at a temple, and then you have this family, Ray. That's why I said that you can be exalted, something higher than a king. You can you can get a, a, a spiritual title, is what I'm saying, you know? I, I honestly kind of feel like that's what, what we see a lot today, is like we see people who would actually say that if they... We're gonna rewrite the Bible today. They feel like they would be in it, or they would they would want their like. Just imagine if they were to just do that. Like let's just say they say, "Hey, we're gonna rewrite the Bible, yeah. and we're gonna give a couple people some some families opportunities to be one of the Book of Kardashian." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the Book of the Book of Brother True. You know what I'm saying? But just imagine if they yeah. if they are offering that to people, saying like, "Hey, there's we're getting ready to put this religious text together, or we're getting ready to put something together." But you know. Forever, your name, your family name, will be in the mouths of those who praise gods. And honestly, that's what it is. When you look at that word church, mm -hmm. no matter what, that is a family name. And you are calling on that family name. Mm -hmm. And if you can't accept that, it's the name of a deity also. Mm -hmm. And you're calling on that too. But at no point is it assembly until after the 1400s. It became assembly because someone put a building together for you to come into. <laughs> now it's right. an assembly place. Right. But we'll look at this other piece because I wanted to go a step further and not just pick with only church itself, uh -oh. you know, so. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, right. I wanted to show that it's not just church that's the problem. So I wanted to look down at this bottom part right here of this church summary where it says uh, it is important. So it is important to know how pivotal a role churches and monasteries played in the community in medieval times and the Middle Ages. The church played an important role in affairs of the state and politics as well. Okay, so real quick. Big piece. Big piece. Big piece. The church and the monasteries played a pretty big role during what? The medieval times during the middle ages mm -hmm. during the dark ages yes okay yes. so we look at yeah. it as a building and i'm saying the church family play a role to such extent it affected government you see what i'm saying yes but i wanted to bring something else out it says an important it is important to know how pivotal a church and monastery played in community yes the word monastery, I'm telling our audience that that is the name of a family also. So the, the word monastery, Brother uh, brother Push, <laughs> you're saying is the name of a family as well. Not it's just church, but monastery, monastery too. Monastery. If you take the I-E-S off, it becomes monaster. Mm -hmm. And that's when it starts to uh, reveal itself because monasteries, the I-E-S on it is what makes it plural, like a bunch of buildings, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you take that off, you get this word monaster. And it's something interesting when you start seeing this word because the word monaster changes into this word monster, mm -hmm. like M-O-N-S-T-E-R. And the word monaster or monster and monastery is the exact same word. So we're going to be showing that right there. But real quick, I wanted to show one thing before we show that monster is a family or monastery is a family we wanted to look at surname spelling variants 
right underneath right here. So, uh, Brother True, if you could read this one right here at the bottom right here where it says the spelling or names. Spelling or names with similar etymologies include Churche, Churche, Church, and Churche. That <laughs> word, the original word, the original word is Churche. That C-I-R-C-E. That word is not Krika. That word is church. And I wanted to show the variants down mm -hmm. here to kind of show right there that is church. That is that word has always been church. And then as it gets English, you know, now you look at the word like as church. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's a family name and that's how you say that word right there. It's not like Kirka. You know, <laughs> there's that there's that evidence of that consistency that you always which we always try to pull for the people like as far as like showing them showing them that right there gives enough arrows to point that we're probably right. <laughs> no, so, but I mean, I, it, it, it's a lot of clues. I mean, yeah. that is showing you like, hey, if you want to learn how to read or if you want to put it in, in your language, this is how it's going to sound. Same but thing. at the end of the day, no matter how it's spelled, mm -hmm. that's what it's saying. That's what it's saying. It's that's saying that the church word is consistent. You the know, word is consistent. It's, it's consistent. So we want to get on to this monastery piece right here. You know, because I did say that the word monastery is the name of a family. So real quick, uh, brother True on monastery in the red right <laughs> here. <laughs> a building or buildings occupied by a community of monks living under religious vows. Okay, so we're all taught that the word monastery means it's a building that's occupied by monks who are under religious vows. Let's keep that in mind right there. This is what we're told. When we look over, we're gonna jump a page. We had to go into some Dutch in order to kind of find the, the connection between the monster family and monastery to show that there is a connection. So there is, we're going to show a couple pages with Dutch writing and um, we do use the, uh, the Google to translate the writing also. But we wanted to show down below right here where it says languages volume one, page 406. This has been translated right here. So if uh, you can look at the bottom, it says monster equals monasterium. You see what I'm saying? Used for various religious buildings, basic. But you see, it says what? Monster equals monasterium. So that's telling you right there that the word monster has a connection to monasterium. monasterium. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, if you read the small writing, you know, it says right here. Okay, so... What does it say? It says down right here, it says monster equals monasterium used, used for, for various, various religious, religious buildings. buildings. So we know that both that there is a connection between monasterium and yeah. monster. Yeah. And um, that's a that's a big one right there, that's though, a Brother Push. That's a big one right there, Brother Push. Yeah. I'm trying to, I, I, I wonder as we dive deeper into this, uh, you know, when did this word monster become something become something totally different than what we th we see today yeah, think of it today well i mean let's even look at it like this when we even look at this other page it says right here and it's also sitting in the greek uh not the greek but uh dutch so we're only highlighting this connection right here and then to the right we have some the stuff that's translated so this is what you said on this paper mm -hmm. But right here, it says monster again, and then it says monasterium. You see what I'm saying? And then it says to the right, there's some writing, and this is written in Dutch. So further to the right is the words translated. And it says right here, it says the church, undisputedly the main church of Boost, Skiold, in the late midi Middle Ages was known as monster, monasterium, which in indicated a respectable age. So again, there's that word monster. Mm -hmm and monasterium and I'm showing the word monster and monasterium and I'm saying the word monasterium is the name of a family so when we get to this next page right here this shows what I've been trying to say there you go monster history family crest and coats of arms early origins of the monster family the surname Monster was first found in Derbyshire, where they held the family seat as lords of the manor. 
The Saxon influence of English history diminished after the Battle of Hastings in 1066. 1066. 1066. That's a whole battle. The language of the courts was French for the next three centuries, and the Norman ambiance prevailed. But Saxon surnames survived, and the family name was first referenced in the 13th century when they held lands. The monster family is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> when I think about this, I think about the TV show, The Monsters. <laughs> that old school show. <laughs> that old school show. I used to love Monsters. that show. Like, I used to love that show. Who would have known that there was a family called Monsters? You know, right. this family right here, the monster family, is the family who made monasteriums. That's the reason why I was showing you in the other paper, you know, or, you know, the other page, that monster equals monasterium. And I'm showing this because, you know, it's in Dutch. But nevertheless, they're showing that monster equals monasterium. And that's why I show this family right here, that this family, the monasterium, is named after this family. When you go to a monasterium, you're going to them, basically. Their family made that building, just like the church family made the physical building. So when you be like, the church is the place to go, you're going to this family's place to worship. When you're going to the monastery to worship, you're going to this family's place to worship. To worship. And you know what's so crazy about all this? For the people, of the Western world, you got churches you go to. Mm -hmm. For the people of the Asian world, they gave them monasteriums to go to. Quite possible they all got together and gave, you know, the Middle Eastern world synagogues. You know, it's just quite possible, you know. But the point of the matter is, is everything that we go to, everything that we praise, is always someone's name or some deity. And you can only find this out if you go below the 1300s, when you're in the 12, like if you look at the monster family, this is dating back 1066. So if you don't go back that far, you wasn't going to never know about the monster family, and you wasn't going to never know that monasterium is named after this family. What brings this to this other piece, you know, before we even uh, read this other part? When I look at how we use that word monster in the USA, I sit and ask, like, how did that word become the boogeyman if it was somebody's name? How did that become the boogeyman? Mm -hmm. Like, when I look at a monster, I guess I have to separate it, you know, from a horror. Like, I look at Freddy Krueger and Jason. I look at them as a horror flick. Uh -huh. When I look at a, a vampire or a werewolf, I see that as a monster. And the reason why I say that is because it's something that transforms from an animal to a human. You know, in all the old movies, that was considered to be a monster. Mm -hmm. Something that, like a werewolf, he trans from an animal, you know, a vampire trans from this to human. You see what I'm saying? That is a monster. And then when you start thinking about these old school movies like the Monsters mm -hmm. or the Adams Family, you know what they constantly show? Vampires, vampires. and uh, vampires. what was the other one? Uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Frankenstein, yep. Constantly, you Frankensteins know? And <coughs> Frankenstein's and, and vampires. And, and if you look at the Munster family, if you notice there's one Frankenstein, yeah. what is everybody else? Vampires. Vampires. And Hello? it's the exact same thing. So then when I started thinking mm -hmm. about that, I'm like, you know what? We're currently going through a situation right now to where we're being awoken to people with vampire tendencies. You know, that mm -hmm. eating and drinking, yes. the taking the adrenal Chrome from the kids. No, we, we we know that's a fact that these are things that are, there are people who actually do drink uh, human blood. Uh, they may not be they're not out there praying and and, and and sucking on necks. Well, I ain't gonna say that, but I'm just saying <laughs> there are people that actually buy it. But they are uh, there. Uh, what they do is they buy pigs' blood. I, I did see a story, a uh, girl bu bu buying pigs' blood, and and she would also she would drink that. But also in addition. Mm -hmm. Also drinking blood from her friends, drinking you know, blood from so her friends. Yeah, it's a lot of clinics. craziness mm -hmm. that you go that's going on. So when you look at that word monster, you be like, well, was this family that hideous? Mm -hmm. You know, like someone coined that family name as the boogeyman. Right. You gotta think about that right there. Like when I thought the monsters, I thought initially the boogeyman. Like who would name themselves monster? Mm -hmm. But this is a name coming out of 1066. Right. So. 
it wasn't originally the boogeyman. But if they were going around killing and doing crazy things, I can understand the reason why we'll say it today. In the Dark yeah. Ages, too. Aren't we talking about... Yes, this is all so Dark this is, Ages. So we're talking about the Dark Ages. Ain't no telling what they what the monster family might have been. It's like this. That's why they, they That might be the reason why people are afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> For, yeah. They're coming out of the Dark Ages, the monster family. They might have been doing some pretty diabolical things Maybe, at the time. Maybe, you know. That's another lesson, you know. But, you know, but, but, you know they, they might have earned that name. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But uh, look at this other piece right here. Uh, Monsters this is South more Island. into the Dutch, but still just showing that it was showing like on, uh, what is it, uh, page 315. It says Monasterium, and then right over to the side, it's highlighted Monster. When we go to the right, you know, there's words written in Dutch, and then we try oh, to, is or is it German? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yes. Basically, the translation is on the side right here. So, uh monasterium a monastery borrowed hence monasteries of munster and in lower germany monsters were called there's that word munster like the movie and in lower germany monsters this family from 1066 made your monastery yes they did and that church family church a also made the churches that we go to and they named the buildings after themselves so if you looked at the last uh, lesson we did on Bible, you have the Bible family who named the book after themselves, the church family who named the building after themselves, the monster family who named the monasteries after them. You know, this ain't nothing spiritual. This is not spiritual. What this is is some madman's concocted plan to make everybody praise some dark worship, some dark madness, some darkness. You know, oh, something, something. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it the Dark Ages. Dark Ages, man. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know what, man. Who knows what was coming out the Dark Ages and what was going on in the Dark Ages, man. I, I, I tell you this right here. So, you know, we got just one other part to look at, y'all. Just to beat this, who the monsters are, you know. That, again, church is named after a family. It's also the name of a deity. Mm-hmm. Then it becomes assembly. You know, and Monster was the name of a family, 1066. All of a sudden, now it's a place of worship. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to know where these names are coming from. I guess from there, you can make a good decision about, is this a worthy place of worship? Because you might want to use your home. So we're going to look at right here. This is Monster South Holland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there is a great deal of uncertainty over the origin of the name Monster. It is probably derived from the Latin monasterium, meaning monastery. The name was also used for the ground that belonged to a monastery. Another explanation was that monster was derived from the old Dutch word monster, which meant, amongst others, big church. (laughs) From Latin, monstrum, which is supported by the fact that monster had those days one of the largest churches in the area. So, monster family, along with the church family, Open up what places of worship? Big churches, mega big, churches, mega churches, Giant big churches. mega places of worship. Whoa, Giant back behind churches. the king. We just blew your mind. Back behind the king, <laughs> right there. That's why I said the word church <laughs> is the name of a deity. Church is the name of a family. Then it becomes the definition a symbol, and the same thing for monastery is the name of a family monster and. I just tell you this, it's awfully crazy that when we say that word, we associate it to the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder, what did this family do so bad to where 800 years later or 1,000 years later, your name is associated to drinking people's blood? Vampire stuff, werewolves. I I tell you what, what would be cool if anybody actually has any independent studies that they did on the monster family or you guys got some little tidbits and facts throw it in the comments we'd love to hear from you about that we love to hear that type of stuff so oh yeah you know just to get you guys talking we love that brother brother push any closing remarks any closing statements so i'd like to say this again you know i grew up a christian but when i started seeing inconsistencies i just could not stop i kept looking and kept looking And the more and more that I looked in history, the more and more I felt like I'm looking at things that don't mean exactly the way that they're written, you know. So, again, if you're interested in this type of study, 
I'm telling you to start your work before the 1300s. You, that dark ages is going to reveal so much truth because come the Renaissance, they have redefined every word. Like, for instance, the word bless. Mm -hmm. The word bless in Old English means blood sacrifice or it means to curse you. Like when one says, God bless you, in Old English, you will be saying, uh, curse the king or curse God. You see what I'm saying? Right. And nevertheless, 800 years later, the word bless is a word of endearment now. Like it was a cuss word 800 years ago, and today we're running around saying, bless you, my brother, and not knowing you just cussed out that guy. You know? Absolutely. So it's, I, I know a lot of you will say, well, this is what life is. This is where we're at, and we got to make good at it with what we got. I don't agree. You got to correct it. The moment that you learn that it's wrong, you don't say it anymore. So I don't say the word bless. I be like, you know, peace beyond, be with you, uh, you know, um, uh, grace to you, anything but that word. Because I don't want to curse someone out. And because I know better, 12th century or not, I don't say it. And it's Absolutely. the same thing with church. I don't go to it because I do not praise the mother goddess. I do not praise Deanna. That's why I don't go to a church. I don't go to a church because I hate the people there. I don't go to the church because I know that's the name of the mother goddess, the huntress with black horns coming out of her head. I do not go to the church. What the heck? Go no. The huntress. <laughs> and you know what? And just for you guys who, just of you who might be new or you guys are new to the channel, we actually have a video on uh, words. Analyzing words. That's yep. also a video on the page. So go check that out. If you want to hear uh, 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 one of our lessons on in, more in depth about the everyday words that we use, trust me, you yes. you you'll probably stop saying the word it. Yes. Just go. Just go check the video out. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about, brother. Push as always. It's a it is a pleasure and it is an honor to be doing this podcast with you alongside my brother, brother, brother True, brother True, my dude, my guy, and man. Um, Again, man, we appreciate all the people that have tuned in. Please don't hesitate to comment. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe to the page. Check out all of our content. We love to hear from you, and we will interact with you. Like I yes. said, if you leave them comments and stuff like that, hey, you know, hey, not only we will, but our other audience members will. But we love that. We love the conversation. We love the the the, the dialogue, man. All of it's good. All of it's positive vibes. Uh, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to the Political Puff Podcast. Oh, yeah, and real quick, mm -hmm. I wanted to thank everybody for helping us get over 1,000 subscribers. Yes, yes. 1,000 subscribers. Yes, That's big right there, <laughs> man. Big. No, we really do want to thank everybody yes. from around the world who has subscribed to the podcast. You are not a number. Man, you are a real person. You are a real person. And we, you. and we know that we, we know that you're watching. We know that you're listening. We, we, we hear you in our comments. You know, good or bad, we hear you, and we encourage it all. We we, we, we we welcome it all. We're just glad that you took the time to listen to what we had to say. So, all in all, thank you guys again for listening to another Political Puff podcast. We out of here. We out of here.